On this slide, we're just showing you the data sheet for the block memory generator. The data sheet describes the features, parameter settings, functionality, and the pinout for the component. Now note that the pinout does not mean that there are implied pin assignments. This just describes the behavior of the ports associated with the component. Many of the cores provide performance expectations. However, the table does not always describe every device or supported speed grade. In case the core has a defined performance specification relative to an industry standard timing spec, that information is provided in detail. But not all cores, especially not the block memory generator, have a performance requirement because it is just another block memory in the FPGA. Device utilization for various core configurations is also provided where possible. In this case, knowing the number of block RAMs used when a large memory is defined is helpful if you're trying to manage your block RAM usage. As I mentioned, the core generator supports schematic and HDL flows. Since most customers are using an HDL flow, we're going to focus just on that. First of all, the VHO and the VEO files are the HDL instantiation templates for VHDL and Verilog. They're provided by the core generator automatically based on your design entry options you set within the ISE tools. Again, we will assume you've selected an HDL flow. The .vhd and .v files are the behavioral simulation wrapper files that you'll require for testing your component with either ModelSim or Xilinx's own iSim simulator. These files are also made automatically. Now CoreGen will produce an XCO file, which is the component's options log used to create the core. This file is automatically associated with the ISC software and is frequently used when you tend to regenerate the core or update the design. Finally, the most important file made is the .ngc file. This is the core netlist that you will need to integrate the core into your design. Again, it's the guts of the component, literally the heart and soul. Note that the core generator does not provide source HDL to designer. This flow protects our IP from corruption. One of the nice benefits of the tight integration of CoreGen with the ISE software is that the language templates utility will automatically contain the necessary instantiation templates made for your component. To see the template, you use the command edit language templates or click on its icon on the horizontal toolbar from the ISC software. This will allow you to add the code to your design in XST or copy it to another synthesis tool for adding the core. After adding the core to your design, you probably want to perform a behavioral simulation to make sure it meets your needs. While this flow is also tightly integrated with the Xilinx iSim simulator, all designers will have to run the compxlib.exe command to compile the behavioral simulation library. Now, this is only required once and is usually done once a designer installs a new version of the ISE software. You should also note that if a later on you decide to install a new version of the core generator to get access to newly available cores or just simply upgrade the core generator, this command will not have to be run again since all upgrades to CoreGen automatically install the new components compiled behavioral model for simulation. But in the case when you're installing the tools, always be sure you run the compxlib.exe command right after you install it. As I mentioned, the high-end point solution cores have a charge associated with them. The mainstream Xilinx cores do not. So first, if you have to pay for the core, you'll want to run a behavioral simulation and make sure it meets your needs. If you have questions about the Alliance core, and you might, we provide vendor contact information at the IP Center on our website, as well as in the data sheet. So give that vendor a call, ask all the questions you want, download the simulation model, and test the core. If you decide you want it, call the vendor back, arrange payment, then download the netlist and all the necessary files with that vendor's help. If the core is provided by Xilinx, give our hotline a call with any questions or concerns. Again, but most of those cores are available for free anyway. Some of the high-end cores, then of course you'll have to contact the IP center and get licensing for that, such as like the PCI core. After you do this, and all you need to do is instantiate the core into your design and copy the netlist into your project directory. Now note that the ISC software will automatically use the wrapper files generated by CoreGen when the cores are present in your design. Note if the NGC file or EDIF netlist is not in the project directory, which it is by default when you use XST to synthesize your design, 
you'll need to be sure to add the directory where the netlist is stored to the cores search directory's property of XST. Or add the NGC EDIF file to your synthesis tool project directory, one of the two. Now, after you've added the core to your design, you've synthesized, and now you're ready to place and route the design, during the first stage of implementation, the implementation tools will read in that NGC or EDIF file that was created by the core generator software. Again, if the core is not in the project directory, you'll be sure to add the directory to the macro search path property of translate. If you're not sure what that is, go look for it in the command line user guide. But basically, it allows you to store your IP netlists in a separate directory outside of your project directory. As I mentioned earlier, you'll have to compile the simulation library when you install updated ISE software. However, if all you do is upload some new cores, you won't have to compile the behavioral simulation libraries again. Now, please note, many VHDL simulators require lower level files to be analyzed before the file that references them. Remember to analyze the wrapper files for your cores before you analyze the file that references them. This is a common mistake a number of people make when using a different synthesis tool other than XST. Also, if you're using a simulator that is not supported by the compxlib.exe script, refer to the core generator guide, contact the hotline, okay, or contact the IP center, and your simulator documentation for more information on how to compile the Xilinx CoreLib library. Now, in summary, a core is a ready-made and verified function that you can insert into your design. Logic Core Solutions are products made by Xilinx, made by Xilinx employees, and are sold and supported by Xilinx, but again, most of them are free, so there's no selling involved. It's only the high endpoint solution cores like the PCI core that have a charge. The Alliance Core Solution products are very different, though. They're very much larger, they're more sophisticated, they took a great deal of time for our Alliance Core partners to build. Those, of course, have a charge associated with them, and they're supported by those Alliance Core Solution partners. And in Core Generator, we provide the contact information as well as some detailed information about each of these cores right there. Using cores can save design time and provide increased performance as well as increased reliability. Okay? Cores can be used in schematic or HDL design flows. Well, there's lots of useful information about the core generator that can be found at the IP Center. This can be reached from the IC software by using the help command. The IP Center will allow you to learn about new IP, update your core generator, find documentation about each core, although core gen has pretty much everything you need to know documentation-wise, and download Alliance Core IP for evaluation. If you would like to see what other courses we offer or what other free RELs are available, go to the Xilinx Education link you see here. I would also like to mention again that there are other architecture modules available that discuss the basics of Xilinx's newest devices as well as good HDL coding techniques which are critical to your design success. You may find all of these very worthwhile, especially if you want to learn more about the differences between our available FPGAs and our newest FPGAs. Again, my name is Frank Nelson. You've been listening to the Core Generator Recorded E-Learning Module. Thanks for listening and thanks for your business.